Hi guys, this is Emily Ullman from Hopscotch Interactive and I am here today to talk to you about this new camera system which I am super impressed by. It is the Planetar's iGuide Planix system. Now this system is, I have to say that this is an unbiased uh, thing that I'm saying right now, but it is potentially a Matterport killer. And I say that I'm biased because I actually own five of the Matterport systems and I've been using it since 2015. But there's a few things that are different about this that are actually really interesting um, and I'm going to go through them with you one by one. But the first one I, I want to talk to you about is that this device is going to save you a lot of time. You are going to be able to take a Z1, a Ricoh Theta Z1 that you already have in your kit and if you plug that into this Planix system, which I did myself and you can do yourself, uh, then you're able to scan so much faster. And what does so much faster mean? That means three to four times faster. I just scanned a full floor, which normally would have taken me four to five hours. I did that in about one and a half hours on Monday with my first time in the field doing this. So that's number one. Number two um, is that this is a LiDAR system. It does not run on infrared, which is what Matterport is built on, it is an infrared scanner. Now, what that means is that this is super accurate and so for creating floor plans and for creating content for your clients where they're looking for that precision, this is the thing. There's no four to six inches tolerance with LiDAR and I can show you because we went out in the field and I can show you what we did that this is in fact finding and scanning those spots and doing it in a way that just totally blew my mind. Um, and then the third thing is that you have a lot of flexibility with this in terms of how long it's hosted. Matterport's issue is that when you go and upload something to their system, guess what? You have to pay for monthly hosting and you're sort of limited in your plan by how much you have to pay. That's not an issue here. You pay for this at the beginning based on the square footage of what they process and then it's free to host it. Now that makes a lot of sense economically for people who know that they're gonna have to have their scans hosted for a long time. So those three things really have changed my mind about what I think I want and need out of the next system that I'll be investing in for creating my 3D tours and my floor plans. So uh, let's talk about the way that we get set up with this system. Uh, I said before, I already owned a Z1 camera, and so this is just one of, the, one of the few cameras that I have, and I was able to pry off the top here, unscrew the screws, and lift up uh, this base and plug in my camera. Um, that was super easy, and um, it only took a few minutes. Uh, and then I went through a quick calibration exercise where I lined up my camera with a corner, and that was the only thing I needed to do in order to get that 360 lining up with the camera and for it to be able to read where it was in the space. Um, from there, I was able to use their app. That took a little bit of getting used to. So, um, you know, I have it on my iPad. This is a large space that I scanned. Um, and let's see, it's, uh, I think I'm offline. Can you so. show us the live lighter? Yeah, I can totally show you the live LiDAR. Let's get back into, let's restart it so that you guys can see me fire it up and um, that will help us get connected again. So like many of these systems, they have their own Wi-Fi built in. And so even if you're somewhere where there's no internet connectivity, that doesn't matter. That's very similar to Matterport. Uh, Matterport has the exact same thing where your Bluetooth um, on your device is connecting you wirelessly to operate the device like a remote control. So I'm gonna turn it on. What's the battery life like, Emily? So, so far the battery life is really long. I mean, I when I first got it, um, I had my Z1 fully charged. And then what's cool is that this system, you charge the base, and when you charge the base, you're actually creating a backup battery for your Z1, which we all know they maybe last at tops, like at 45 minutes or an hour when you're using them continuously without a charge. So this backup battery system here, um, which you can see by this blue indicator light, shows me um, my battery life. And uh, yeah, so I've actually already done a full day's shooting, or at least it was a half a day shooting. Um, and that brought me down about three quarter, or one quarter on my battery life, and I haven't charged it yet. So 
um, battery life, I think, is, is one that I would trust to go out in the field and do multiple shoots in a day without needing to recharge my battery. Um, and let me get onto the Wi-Fi so that we're connected to the device and then I can show you what it looks like on the iPad. Is there a special Wi-Fi password for the iDrive? Yeah, there is. So thank you for asking that. So the password that you have to log into is actually just the serial number for your device, um, which I think is on, I, I did it a couple days ago, but it's just here on the bottom. So you turn the device over, look at it, have your serial number. It might even be on the receipt that comes with the box. Um, but then you can just enter that in and I haven't had to re-enter it as long as I had um, the connectivity, it, it worked just fine. Um, so that's good. And then you go, it, you know, they walk you through all of it and you just add the links um, on your iPad or on your mobile device and you can use it um, basically by adding this to your home screen. So I added the, I added the, this um, iGuide Planix app right here to my home screen and when I did that, um, that gave me this link here, which says that I'm not connected. So I'll just double check that I am connected. I think your this went out again. I think that I have like a window on it for using it. And if you don't do it in that time, then it dies out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is it good so it, far or is yeah, it? Yeah, this is great. I think it's just like most 360 cameras where if you're not using it right away, it's going to power off to save battery life. Yeah. Can you tell me more about this here? I see you have a 16 gigabyte USB. Stick. Yeah, and I think you can put in any size gigabyte um, USB stick. So if you have a 256 or if you have a 128, you can put it in there and then you'll just increase the capacity of what you can scan and what data is on there. Um, I like this a lot. And one of the reasons that I think it's cool is because um, when I am using Matterport, right, I, I'm limited with the capacity on my iPad, and then I have to do sort of a rigmarole, complicated um, backup um, procedure, which isn't even supported by Matterport. That's really not part of what they help you with in terms of owning the system and operating the system. And that's always been sort of like, this point where I've filled up my iPad and then I'm nervously transferring stuff to my external hard drives or iExplorer and I've had stuff that didn't back up properly and I didn't know. So, so I, this is a better backup storage than just having it on the iPad. Yeah. You're storing it in two places. You're storing it in two, well, I'm not sure if you're actually storing it on the iPad, yeah. but you're definitely storing it on this external flash drive which means that all you do to transfer it is unplug the flash drive and stick it in your computer or into your device and then you're, you're able to move the files around and you can see them right away. It's not some you know, mysterious black hole, um, which I think is really helpful. So, okay, so check it out. This is the thing and we are not getting a photo feed here, so I'm not sure why that's not doing that. Um, let's try it again. So. I'm toggling back and forth by with some of the visuals. And so I don't know, Kevin, why this is not showing up. Um, this is because I'm still sort of new to it. But if I go into full screen mode, um, what you can see here is I've got the green. This is the place, uh, this is the placement of the camera in my room. And this green is showing the outline and that look, there's Kevin's arm, which is being detected right in front of the LiDAR. And that's awesome. And it's obviously, it's doing this in 360 degrees. So this doesn't spin. We can't hide from it, so we still need to run away and hide. But if we wanted to, I wanted to also point out that um, you can go into, um, because the, the Theta Z1 has the ability for you to, to take one of the 180s first and then the other 180 second and then it'll be stitched together um, you can operate that here um, and so then you're able to you know either shoot with both lenses at the same time or you can just shoot with one um, which I think is really cool if you can't hide if there's nowhere to hide uh, yeah but this is this is the device um, and what it looks like when you're just doing it so like if we were to take a picture um, no project is selected oh I see that's why let's go back to project and we'll go to make a new one, new one, and create, creating a new project, add a floor. Let's say this is the main floor, 
and create it, and let's see what happens. It should, I don't know if it's previewing. It's turning back on. It's, it's turning back on? Awesome. Oh, there we go. So now you can see, here I am, and there's my preview, right? So I've got my Z1, and they've put it into HDR mode so I can see out that window there. Um, and I'm able to preview what I just shot, which is awesome. And then this was my scan, right? So my scan data is there. It's, it's not a textured, um, it's not like a textured uh, scan like you would get from Matterport with the colors, but it's showing me the floor plan. And so I can already tell that even though I don't have that color plan, I'm a little low battery, even though I don't have that, um, those colors, I still have what's basically a black and white and a schematic that enables me to create the floor plan. So I feel like that is enough for my AEC clients, my um, architect clients, you know, my construction clients, um, engineers, foundation scanning, uh, where maybe this is not being used for marketing, but it's being used for generating that floor plan and doing it really easily and quickly. Do, so, do you yeah. Think this collects better data or more accurate data than Matterport? I think it does. And the reason it does is because it is using uh, a laser, right? So LIDAR um, is using, you know, a different type of measurement than the infrared. So the infra infrared is actually, um, it's just a less accurate system and it's going to have interference from things like sunlight. It's going to have interference from reflective surfaces. I don't have that issue with my LIDAR. So that's not, at least I don't think, uh, Im impacting the use of this in certain situations like, um, you know, scanning in a bright room, for example. Do I still have to mark my windows and my mirrors? No, okay, no, you don't have to mark anything. So, um, well, that's because there's actually, there is some human, um, human intervention in, in here. So if you go, if we go back to projects that I've already done, um, let's see um, if we can go back to um, projects. Do, do, do. I want to look up the ones that I've done before. Um, you sorry. You always create a more intensive tutorial that shows the iPad too. Yeah. You know, because I think there is a video that needs to be like how to use this thing A to Z. You Absolutely. Know? How do I get back to the? Um, oh, re let's just reload the app and let's see if that helps me out. Project. Yeah. Okay. So I had to reload the app. So I reloaded the app um, and that brought me into a, um, I can show you guys, and we'll look at this later, but am, is the visual okay there? Yeah. All right, so check this out. So this is a scan that I did of a full floor on Monday. I didn't know what I was doing, I was just testing it out, but I'm such a scanning queen that I said I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna try it out. So what was awesome about this is the full floor uh, commercial space and the absolute killer app part of this for me was this align function. So what's so amazing about it is that if I actually have my last scan in the wrong place, can you see that I'm able to move this? If this ends up over here and that scan data, which is in blue and shaded in blue is in the wrong spot, like say it shows up here and it's wrong, then I don't have to rescan it. All I have to do is come over here line it up and I'm going to hit snap and it snaps it into place where it's supposed to go and you can twist it around and you can play with it but I can't tell you how much time I've spent with misalignment and scans being in the wrong place this is a incredible incredible feature that made me so excited because let me just show you again like I'll save it but say I needed to align it what if this ended up over here and you, you were in with a Matterport situation and you were like, I don't know where to put this. Um, I can move it around. I can reconfigure it. Um, with Matterport, you might have to come back the next day and repaint the walls. You time, might you know, move some furniture. How many times have we had that happen, <laughs> yeah. Kevin? Yeah, exactly. So let's snap that into place. Okay, so that one didn't work. That was a little off. Let's just move it back up here. Let's try it again. There, snapped perfectly into place and saved. Well, thank you for doing this video. Yeah. Should people subscribe to this channel? Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, please make sure to subscribe. 
and uh, like it, let us know what you think. Uh, I check all the comments and Kevin checks all the comments and so we are always scanning these uh, to see if you have any other questions or you wanna see us review something else. Uh, we are out in the field using these tools every single day. We're gonna be testing it more, so we're gonna discover more and we'll share that with you once we learn a few more things. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, get in touch, and thank you.